We're going to discuss today um, the topic of significant digits, which comes out of the measurements and the precision and all of that, but it's, it's really now how do we treat these numbers now that we know that we have to have some sort of precision and we have some limit to our measurements, how do we do calculation with them so that we are not implying that we have much greater precision than we actually did in our measurements. The secret to that will be significant digits. So this is one of those lecture things that you guys should be should definitely write some notes down. I am recording it, so I'll post this on YouTube and there's a link to uh, to the Unit 1 playlist right in Unit 1 on the website. So if you need to, you can certainly go back, or if, you're, if you miss a day, or even if you just come in late and miss part of it, you can uh, pick up and get, yeah, I was talking about the UG. So. No, okay. Okay, so let's talk about something. Um, now you're a friendly mathematician will always tell you that two-thirds is two-thirds. And that you could write this with as many sixes as you want until you get tired, and then for some reason, at this point, you write a seven. We, of course, know differently that we aren't going to be, we, ha we can measure quite well out to a certain precision, but then we have to limit ourselves um, and so, by and large, we will not be writing fractions. There are a few exceptions. Um, if it's something where we are trying to cut another thing in half, we can't say that it's a fraction like this. We could say that we cut it and so that the piece we are holding is 0 0.500 of the whole, and maybe that's a meter for example. We could add mo more zeros if we are more precise, but we cannot say that we have one half because writing one half means it's an exact number. The only time that we'll see exact numbers here is occasionally in a formula that will have a fraction as part of it because there we have uh, proven in the past that um, although other parts of this formula might be measured, their relationship is exactly in that ratio. The other times that we could do it are counted numbers. So if we have, if we have pies on the table, we could tell that there are exactly three pies. If we were measuring something about the pies, like their diameters or their masses, well, now it's a measured value, so that's a little different. But we know there are three pies. In both of these cases, we have infinite precision on those values. Okay, so we don't have to worry about this thing that we're going to be calling significant digits. But any measured value we do, significant digits are the way to count the precision of a measurement. So let's look at some various numbers. There are a couple rules that we have to uh, that we have to take into account as we're doing this, and then we'll practice a little bit of the math. My hope is that we could we can get through this quickly enough so that you'll have significant time to do, to start the homework in class and ask questions. If not, then yeah, that's okay. You got weekend homework and everybody loves that. Um, so let's look at how to count significant digits. You'll also sometimes see this sig significant figures. I don't like saying significant figures. I like saying significant digits. However, I like writing sig figs. Those are, so those are used interchangeably. I don't know. Don't judge me. I'm not judging. So if I abbreviate it, I often abbreviate sig, sig figs, even though I never say significant figures, except right now. 
Um, first thing is, any non-zero number that is reported is significant. So anytime we have a 5.73221, we count all of those. One, two, three, four, five, six. Gesundheit. So those are easy. It's tricky when they start getting zeros in them. So I'm going to try and write out the rules as best I can. Please stop me if you're questioning what the rule means because I'm really just trying to get it from my thought onto the screen and so that might not work well for communication. Um, do count zeros after a decimal and other non-zero numbers. count that zero. We, we count both of those zeros for a total of four significant figures. The seven and the five, of course, they're non-zero, so they always get counted. Zeros after a decimal and, which they're after a decimal, and after a non-zero count. Likewise, 7.000 these zeros are after a decimal and after a non-zero, that's also four. We do count zeros in between non-zeros at any time. So 7.005 has four sig figs. 7.05 has three. But now there are a list of some zeros that we won't and we'll discuss a little bit why we count some and not the others. two zeros. We would count the seven and the five. And we would continue to count zeros. We'll do the complex, a little more complex ones at, after we get all the rules. We would count other zeros that follow, that are in the do count. And then we do not count zeros following non-zeros without a decimal point. So 
that would be like 75,000. We don't count these. So this only has two sig figs. Here's the reason why. The zeros that we don't count don't add any new information. Let's take, for example, um, this number. Let's say, as an example, that we were measuring in meters, and we said that we had 75,000 meters. Well, we know that that's equivalent to 75 kilometers. What we're saying is that it is not the same as 75.000 kilometers. Why? We, when we write it this way, this is a convention, we're saying that we haven't measured these real, real precisely. We've rounded to 75,000, or in another word, 75 kilometers, but it could be some fraction of it that's close enough to round to that. If we didn't measure it that precisely, but not more precisely, how would we do So if we measured it to 75,000 meters precisely? Precisely. Okay. There are two ways that we could do that. One way would be to change it into uh, kilometers. There are actually three ways. So this would be an okay way to do it. Just change the, what unit we're measuring in, but then put the precision after it. So um, let's, let's put this as an example. 75,000 meters with five sig figs. The ways that we could write that are 75.000 kilometers, because these are zeros following a decimal point in non-zeros, we count them. That's indicating that we have measured out to this digit so that we know it. We could do it as 75,000 with either a point there, meters, that's one way, or 75,000 and a bar over the last digit meter. That indicates that that is not a repeating number because it's not after a decimal. We don't, nature doesn't do repeating numbers. So we don't use that there, but that's another way to indicate that that is a significant digit. Or perhaps the best way is to put it in scientific notation. So we would say 7.5 and then we want all those digits, so 0, 0, 0 times 10 to the it'd be four meters. All of those mean the same thing. This is probably the best way to do it. Since we're on this subject, um, I have discussed this with a couple people. How to best use your calculators? Because we in physics, you come across a fair number of values in scientific notation and I want to make sure um, I in my experience you haven't learned the best way in math to do it you've learned a way to do it but not the best way to use your calculator and I could be wrong with that but um, so on a calculator there are two ways that you can write this because right here this is really two different numbers that are multiplied together in this form. And so you can get into trouble if you say took one divided by 7.5000 times 10 to the fourth power. It's going to take one divided by the 7.5, then take that result and multiply it by the 10.4, or 10 to the fourth. That's very different than what you want. You actually want it divided by this whole number. So one way you could do it is put parentheses around that. That's, in my experience, the way that the math teachers have typically taught you. The easier way, the way that your calculator is designed to do it is using this double E function up here. So you would put it in 7, 7.5, second function, and the double E to get that. Four. That is a single number. 
your calculator will not split it up. It's possible that your calculator might put double E's there. All it means is it's shorthand for exponent, 10 to the power of, but it treats it as a single number. one value. Whereas up here, this is really two values. Either way is okay with me. Just be careful. Practice safe math, right? Um, if you're going to write it out like this, cool. Make sure you've got your uh, parentheses appropriate. This way is my way because it's easier and lazier, and I don't have to worry about parentheses nearly as much this way. Let's do a couple practice sig figs before we go on to the next thing, um, which is how to do it. So do these on your own or with the person next to you. A little hard to see on the screen here, but um, the only ones that we didn't count were the zeros that ended up being beforehand. I probably should have put, let's do this one since we're at it, 7,050. How many sig figs? Three. Three. Which one don't we count? The last zero. Right. We don't count that one, but we do count these three. Okay. Good. Well now, let's talk about how we use these then. So this is now going in, once we see a measurement, we saw how we can make the measurements with appropriate precision. We saw to how to translate those measurements now into significant digits. These are important because whenever we combine two values or more, we have to keep track of that precision so that we don't imply that we know something <laughs> at a much higher level than we actually do. So let's look at, um, we, we call it propagating, or using these in arithmetic. We're going to start with the most common way that we do it here in physics, which is a multiplication, which also includes division, since that's really the, essentially the same thing. So if we multiply or divide values, the resultant value has the same number of significant digits as the number with the fewest that went into it. And I'll give an example afterwards. So same number of sig figs. As um, component with the fewest. So for example, could take 2 times 2.0 times 2.00 times 2.000. In a calculator, we're just going to put these numbers in and we will put them all in with zeros I wouldn't include, but we'll put them in with all of their values. We get essentially 2 times 4, 8, 16, right? 
how many significant digits should our result, result have? One. So it's 20, because that 16 has two. So when we get to the end, we actually have to then round that value to have the appropriate number. So actually, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 20. <laughs> Right, because 20 has just one sig fig. It just kills me. Let's explore, maybe this will help you a little bit understand why. Let's focus on this value. We measured it to two, but when we measured it, we must have, we may have rounded a little bit. This isn't 2.00. It's just something that's, well, closer to two than any other whole number. Which means, how small could my measurement have been if it had been more precise and still rounded to two? Could have been 1.5. What do we get if we multiply 1.5 times two times two times two? Well, that's eight times one and a half, that's 12. How big could that measurement have been and still rounded down to two? Okay. 2.499999. Almost 2.5. So could have been like that. If we multiply eight by two and a half, well now we get up to twenty. So all we can say is that because of the, the limited precision of this number, it would be somewhere between 12 and 20. But we can't say where. It's a limit of our measurement. So when we're using these sig figs, what we're doing is saying, I know it's about 20, but it could be a little more or a little less. In this example, it could really only be less. That's just the way things round out but it's, it's highlighting the fact that we're not 100% completely sure of our number. Does that make sense? Any questions that people are dying to ask? I don't know what you're muttering. But I'm going to move on. I said, I thought you don't grab numbers before multiplication, but you have to deal with that. Unfortunately, whenever we measure, we have already rounded. And physics is a, does, physics deals with measured values, so we can't get around it. There's no such, unless you're counting something, there's no such thing as, you know, three pies. If I make three pies three times, well, then I have exactly nine. Um, let's talk, so this one's actually pretty easy. We'll have some formulas or some uh, calculations that have several numbers multiplied together. Put them all in, look at each number, and round to the lowest number of significant digits in the smallest, as the smallest number. So one of our um, formulas will be um, for a gravitational force, which is the a gravitational constant, don't worry about what they mean right now, times two masses, so the two masses that are being attracted by gravity, divided by the square of the distance between them. So I gotta look this up. Um, don't remember that constant off the top of my head. I did at one time. 6.673 times 10 to the negative 11. Newtons times meters squared per kilogram squared. And let's say that we're looking at how much you are attracted to the Earth. And you have a um, mass of, say, 60 kilograms. The Earth has a mass of 5.98 times 10 to the 24 kilograms. 
and then the distance between you is actually the distance from you right now to the center of the earth it's about 6.37 times 10 to the 9 I think nope 6 meters and we square that let's as practice with our calculators let's all do this calculation so the way I'm going to answer this is I'm going to put the 6.673 second oops second function e minus 11 this is minus to the minus 11th power I was running out of space I apologize times 60 times 5.98 now second function 24 I don't have to worry about parentheses up there because all of the well one they're being multiplied um, and two since I use the e function they're all single numbers so I have three single numbers I'm going to divide that by this now if I'm if I'm writing out times 10 raised to the power 6 I do have to have parentheses around this since I'm lazy and I'm not I'm going to put 6.37 get that second function e and 6 and then just get the square I don't need parentheses because that's interpreted as one number that I'm squaring on the bottom And I get a result of, everybody try and do this so you can see if you've got it. If not, we'll have time to come up and say, hey, I didn't get that. Five hundred and ninety point zero five seven nine eight eight seven. The units of force are going to be newtons, and we could see that. We'll work on that later, so don't worry about it. Well, you got meters squared there. Cancel these meters squared, kilograms squared. Cancel kilograms squared there. Don't worry about that, it's Newton's. So is my weight, what is my weight? Why? Because this one right here is our limiting factor, one sig pig in 60. Could be as low as 55, could be as high as 64.99 kilograms, but since I only reported it with one sig fig, I can't tell. So my actual force that I can report with confidence is 600 newtons because this has one sig fig. Or six times 10 to the second newtons would also be okay. It's all about not overselling your measurements. If you've got one limiting factor like that 60 kilograms that you're not overly sure about, you can't imply that you are sure, really, really sure about the result. Mm -hmm. What is the last digit on the top right? Yeah, sorry. Let's, let's do this. Let's, I'll move this over. Oops. It is 5.98 times 10 to the 24. Kilograms. It's the mass of the Earth. Okay, the other rule that I want to get through so that you have 10 minutes or more to, to work is so we've talked about. Um, multiplication and division works the same way either for that. Addition and subtraction. This one works a little differently than sig figs. Ultimately we come back to sig figs but um, for this one if I have something like 10.7 as an example, um, I have three sig figs, but I know that it's more than, than 10. 
So if I were adding something like 11, well, I know the result is going to be more than 21 because I'm sure about that uh, 0.7. I am not real sure about what goes here. The so the rules for addition and subtraction have to be a little bit different to account for this and to account for carrying. So for example, if I had 1.0, well now I'm pretty confident in both of those numbers. So I could be confident that it's going to be 11.7, and I know that that seven is significant. So I'm not gonna just throw it away. Um, let's take um, I'm going to do it even better. 6.0 plus 7.7. That's, that's what I should have started with. B, 13.7. I'm confident in all of these numbers. I only have an extra sig fig here because I carried a number, but that's still important. That's still significant. So I'm actually gaining a significant digit here, and I can't just arbitrarily round that because both of those are significant. So what we track instead of just significant digits with addition and subtraction is decimal places. So the rule for addition and subtraction is that the result has as many decimal places as the component with the fewest. Okay, 10 plus 9 we know is 19. Since our 9 has no decimal places, we can't carry one down here. But we don't have to round it further because we're looking at decimal places with addition rather than significant digits. We don't have to round this to 20. We get 0 0.1 here. Even though this has two significant digits and this has four, our answer ends up with just one because we're following the fewest number of decimal places instead. So we, in this respect, we, kinda, we can kind of gain or lose significant digits based on addition and subtraction. We don't do a ton of that in this class. It's usually multiplication division. Questions? Any questions? This is really just a, let's practice these rules. And as we go through the class, we'll, you'll be able to wrap your head around them a little better and understand the why more. Mm -hmm. uh, could you digits using uh, logarithms? We, did, we, we use logarithms so infrequently in physics that I actually forgot those rules. So we're not going to worry about them. Um, there is a rule of concerning logarithms or antilogs. Uh, raising something to a you know, power's exponents. I've gone over it a couple times in the last few years, but we don't use them in class, so I don't practice them and I don't make you practice them. Okay. Good to know though, there is a rule for them that's important in things like calculating pH. We just don't do that in physics. So we get a little break there. Okay. Let's take the last 10 minutes or so, work on homework 1.1. 1